ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Paint Desk Rumblings. Tonight, I am joined by uh, a, one of the powerhouses of the Ninth Age project, I guess. He's a member of the exec executive, <coughs> executive board, uh, the human resources team, and he's also an administrator. It's uh, Grimbold Blackhammer. Say hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how are you tonight? I'm good, although uh, I strongly resent you implying that I am any form of powerhouse. I, I think <laughs> that, that title is reserved definitely for someone else. Yeah, there, there are a few in the project, but I, I think you qualify for providing the news and all of that, uh, as you do. Oh, wow, uh, thank you. Yep. <laughs> I, I, it's an important job, definitely. Uh, so, tonight we will be talking about uh, tournaments and uh, how how you go go about uh, going to them i think we'll have a pretty beginner friendly approach uh, looking at it uh, in the perspective of uh, yeah, some general tips and tricks and uh, our thoughts about tournaments in general um, not really high end i think i don't know know about uh, your back background grim but uh, i'm not uh, I, I go to a lot of tournaments but i don't do well at them at least I am the half that makes the top half possible. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, I, I always uh, my goal is always to get in the in the top half, uh, but uh, and I succeed about half of the time. So, yeah, I also make that possible, I guess. I'm joking. I actually do fairly well. I'm I I rarely win, but I usually can either come away with something best sportsman, yep. if nothing else. Yep, that's always a good goal. Um, I think we'll get into more details of that during the show. Uh, but uh, before we dwell too deep into that, we have the Hobby Spotlight. So uh, what are you doing in the hobby at the moment, Grim? Um, I, I have, have a sh shared screen here and show some pictures. Oh, OK. Uh, I have the sad duty to rebuild an army. Um, I store my uh, Infernal Dwarf army in uh, large, uh, we call them Lexan containers, uh, big Tupperware containers. Yep. And while I was sitting at my painting desk, uh, just middle of the day and just out of nowhere, I heard this horrible crash. And I, I don't know how, but it hit the floor and it hit the floor bad. So when I opened it up, it was one of those moments where you just feel kind of sick. Everything yeah. was mashed together. Models were off bases. Arms were everywhere. I had models literally broken in half. Oh, and I, that's, that's and awful. I debated for about a month, is it worth putting back together? But of course, it is. It just took me a long time to get there. And uh, I'm still in the process. But right now, I am uh, working on a bull centaur uh Taruk anointed unit i've um yeah, you sent me one of those pictures i think yeah here it is yeah um i i usually take my time in trying to pick good colors i've got my base color i've got my shade now i got to figure out a highlight for the muscles and there's a lot of muscles on this unit so i want to make sure i get something that stands out yeah that uh, sure is um but it lo looks like a good start there you have some See, I need to turn off slide so I can see, actually see my screen. Um, you got some some basic highlights in there already, it seems. I do, although uh, hopefully my priming is done well enough that you can't tell. This is probably the sixth or seventh time I've painted all the skin on this thing, and I just can't seem to land something that I really like. Yeah, skin is a, a tricky one. Uh, you gotta get try, you, you gotta try to make it actually look alive. So yeah, it's a tricky. Yeah. Um, if you're going to go to a tournament, you, I I want at least want to field an army that's presentable. I'm certainly yeah. not a a grand painter by any stretch, but uh, yeah, I want it to be something that I'm not ashamed to put on the table. Definitely not if I can help it. Uh, you know, camo gray of plastic. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good goal. Uh, always fighting the war war against the the gray. As yes. They say. Uh, so I, I gotta ask, those uh, pictures you sent, you sent me, are those before or after the crash? 
Those are from before. Um, okay. The the army was originally conceived back in, uh, like I think a lot of people, I've got a, a background coming from um, Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Yeah. And uh, if you can see the pictures, you can tell I'm a good painter. I'm definitely not a great painter. I'm just sort of middle of the road. But I wanted my army to look, um, uh, I don't know, reasonably good. And hey, so the experiment, the experiment was if I paint my models as I normally do, but I put a lot of work into my basing, how much better does it make the model look? And so far, I've been pretty happy with the result. Um, so yeah, I keep it. Seems keep like a really good approach. Thanks. The bases are awesome. Uh, they are all custom built out of Scopey. It takes a while, but it's worth it. Damn. <laughs> uh, I, I don't put this much work into my uh, into my other armies. This is just yeah. they're infernal dwarves. They're a labor of love. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, the the, the base for the uh, I guess the Kadim the Kadim destroyer. That's that's really sweet. With Thanks. The, yeah, I had to put that on a uh, on a fifty mil base when I bought the model. I was actually playing Kings of War. This was after the uh, mm -hmm. the end times came and crushed us all and uh so i wanted to be able to play them on both a one fifth or on a 50 by 50 and also a uh, uh 100 by 150 okay yeah so it is magnetized so you can switch <clears throat> between yeah. yeah yeah that's sweet okay yeah i can really fe feel your pain about uh, the army crashing to the floor i had that experience once it oh. wasn't that bad bad in the end but uh, i was pulling my ar army out of the car packed into one of the games workshop carry bags yeah and somehow the vibrations of the car had opened up the the snap uh, lids of uh, of the box so the lid just fell open and everything spell out on the tarmac uh, that uh, sucks there was a lot of shipping, but uh, overall, not that bad, really. So I, I was lucky uh, in the <laughs> in the catastrophe, I guess. Nice. So that's what I've been working on. What are you working on? Uh, uh, thanks for asking. Uh, I'm working on a on an Inquisitor for my Empire of Sonshal army. I'm not sure if I can get it to focus up here. Something like that. So the model is from Avatar, Avatars of War, uh, and uh, it's their Marshal with pistols and weapon. I think it's called. I link it down below. Uh, it's a nice model. I got it as a gift from a friend, um, so I'm happy to, to be painting it up. And I'm doing a bit of a different scheme on it uh, than from the rest of my, my army. I'm using the the secondary colors, so to speak, from my army on, on this lady. Uh, so my army is mostly reds and yellow and black on the uniforms, but I also have some purple and green in, in there. And on this one, I'm going mostly with purple on the cloak here. And then there's a little bit of detail in green as well on a, uh, an otherwise uh, quite pale. Um, scheme nice way so, to have her stand out yep yeah. uh so i'm really happy with that so far gonna be working on her um for the evening uh and with that out of the way we will move on to the news uh and now i will share my screen for real this time something like that So oh, can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. So uh, this is the model I'm uh, I'm working on from on Avatar Avatar's War. So yeah. Uh, in other news, uh, we have some new stuff from uh, uh, Grablecast. They, they usually do mostly terrain, as I understand it, too. but they are working on some uh, some uh, horses. Uh, suitable for both uh, Empire of Stonestyle and uh, uh, Kingdom of Equitain, I guess. Um, so th those will be 
uh, available soon, I think, or, or maybe already are. Um, so if you're up for some ni nice looking horses, you can check those out. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure what kits that you can get that, that has to double the amount of riders as horses, so you could make uh, extra value from it, but um, yeah, it, it can be useful, I guess. Uh, next, we have some news from Lumbar Miniatures. They have uh, run their Kickstarter for Vermin Swarm stuff. And now they are showing some uh, painted pictures of their miniatures, which I thought was really cool. I'm not a Vermin Swarm player, but those look really nice. Yeah. Uh, they have this, uh, let's see, they have sort of an, uh, a World War One. Uh, theme to the, the, the range. It's not that uh, noticeable on, on uh, these miniatures, but uh, yeah, it's uh, great to see some some more stuff for the vermin swarm, for sure. Yeah. So that's neat. Uh, next we have, uh, let's see here, a Neor miniatures, something like that. They ran a Kickstarter a while ago, uh, and uh, starting to put out. Uh, these into into stores, I think. Uh, you can see some other miniatures here. Really cool ogres and uh, trolls. Uh, I think they call them orcs, uh, but they, they can be used as uh, yeah, whatever you want, I guess. Fairly large miniatures, really classic style, uh, sculpted by hand, so they get that uh, that nice, um, that nice uh, old school look. I'm a bit tempted to get get myself some of these. Uh, I don't really know what I would use them as, but uh, they look really nice, in my opinion. Is that a giant miniature? Because that would look fantastic for like an Asklander's army. Yeah, uh, 60, 60 millimeters tall. So yeah, that's uh, suitable for a giant. Um, and, and indeed, for an, an, an Oskland army, it would be perfect. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, I will link all these down below uh, also, so you can check them out. Uh, Admiral to Miniatures uh, really released some uh, new stuff, this Mother and Child miniature for the uh, suitable for the Infernal Dwarves. Let's see if I can load. Here we go. Uh, and also a little pirate miniature. Uh, this one was released uh, recently. So he has uh, quite a small <laughs> range of uh, neat little Infernal Dwarf models. Uh, and uh, yeah, these are just the latest ad latest additions. I have some of the, these in my possession. You, uh, I don't have Infernal Dwarfs, but I use them. I'm planning to use them for terrain as statues and such. Um, so, but so maybe something for you? Maybe. Uh, Admiralty Miniatures, I believe, is run by, if you know him on the forums, as... Uh, I, I know him Karen... in pers pers person, actually. Oh, do you? Yep. He's, I haven't he, met him yet. He, he goes to pretty much all the tournaments here in Sweden. Really he's nice a, fellow. He's a fun sculptor. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I talked about old school style on the uh, and your miniatures, and he's really got the, that old school style on his as well. So yep. it's it's nice. Uh, so check those out if you're interested. Uh, let's see. Um, next we have some uh, Black Friday sales, although. Uh, I guess Black Friday is officially over, but uh, some of them go into the week weekend as, a, as well. So you still have the chance to get this. So Woodax has uh, a 25% off. Um, they have a nice little selection. I'm uh, perhaps most interested in their destroyer, suitable for a Kadim destroyer. Pretty nice looking. Um, also, Norba Miniatures has a sale 
uh, you get an, an extra hero in your uh, uh, delivery if you order for, uh, I think it was 500 euro or more. No, not 500, 50, surely. Yeah, 50 euro. I accidentally uh, translated into Swedish crowns in my head. <laughs> <coughs> it can happen to anyone. Uh, Avatar's War also has a sale, 30% uh, off. Uh, same as Magnetic Movement Trace, uh, although, yeah, they have 20% off, I think. So some uh, nice deals out there. Um, that's all I have for, for Minish News. Have you seen anything that you would want to share? Want to share? Um, there's so much news in the industry. Um, it's, yeah. it's really hard yeah. to know even where to begin. Yeah, I, I know know what you say, what you mean. There are so many miniature comp companies out there. It's difficult to to keep track, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Um, we will move on to some other news. Uh, it has been fairly slow from the Ninth Age project side, um, but I. There was one announcement re recently that uh, maybe you can speak about a little bit about, uh, about uh, recruitment. Oh, um, some of our recruiting team uh, had to leave for personal reasons. Uh, one was job related and one was family related. Um, so we're looking for additional members uh, for the team. If someone has Scribus experience or wants to learn how to use Scribus, uh, they would definitely be welcome on the team. Layout is the team that uh, assembles the army books for uh, public viewing, especially the uh, legendary versions of the books. Um, yeah. And uh, so they're, they're a critical component to uh, assembling the product, but unfortunately, two of our key people just left, so we're a little shorthanded. I see. Yeah, it, and even before that, I think it was uh, a bit, a bit of a bottle, bottleneck for the production of of material. It is finding technical people that want to donate their time is always a little bit of a challenge. Um, the people we've had working, not just in that department, in all our departments, but in layout in specific, have done a fantastic job the amount of hours that they've put in of their own free time, I can't even count. But um, yeah, if you're interested, uh, if you know Scribus or you want to learn Scribus, you're willing to learn Scribus, um, it's a fun position. Uh, they're a really good group that work pretty well together uh, of the people that uh, we put back into the team. Uh, you can either reach out to me directly or you can um, click on the volunteering um, uh, button on the web page. Yeah, that's great. Uh, really hope we can get some new people into, into the team. Yes, always looking for more volunteers. <laughs> yeah, the one thing we always need. All, always need. Yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, unless you have anything else you want to add in the terms of news? Well, the Infernal Dwarf uh, task team is approaching their public beta testing uh, phase for playtesting the new rules. So hopefully people will start getting some peaks on those. Um, I think that's the big piece that's going to be coming out sometime, hopefully soon. Yeah. Uh, I've seen that there have been some updates about, about that in the in the scrolls as, it, as, as they come out. <clears throat> but it's uh, good to hear that it's being worked upon. It is. Um, they have... Uh, really burned the midnight oil on this and i definitely think the infernal dwarf players are going to see some stuff they really like yeah uh, i i can only agree from what, what i read uh there was one piece about their their um their war machines and how they had a a uh, an industry that supported modular design of their war machines and, and that, uh, as an engineer, engineer, really piqued my interest. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Infernal Dwarves are the most uh, industrial race uh, of all of the races. Not saying they always have the best product, but they're the most industrial. So uh, their ability to mass produce things um, is definitely going to give them an edge on the battlefield. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, so we are very much looking forward to, th to that. 
as an Infernal Dwarf player, uh, I am definitely looking forward to seeing how the final product comes out. Yeah, I, I suspect that um, uh, as with every release of uh, army books so far, uh, I will be very, very, very tempted to start a new army with that new book. So far, <laughs> I, I have been able to resist, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Nonsense. They're the coolest army in the game. You should be playing them. Doesn't matter how much new models will cost you. You should be playing Infernal Dwarves. Yeah, it's not a, not a model cost that deters me. I just don't have the time to work on them. I have so many project go projects going on. It's just insane. Yeah, we all have that problem. Yeah. But... Oh, all well. right. <laughs> yeah. Someday we'll, we'll get them all done. Yes, yes. The dreams we all have of having multiple armies and when we just can't seem to squeeze it into our lives. Yeah. I have to, I have two that I, I I bring regularly to tournaments, and uh, now I'm working on the third and fourth. But it's gonna be a long while before those are ready. What, which armies are those? Uh, the Emperor Sornstall, that's uh, right in front of me right now, and also some uh, Vermin Swarm. Nice. I have an unhealthy habit of only choosing uh, horde armies. I have. Uh, Orcs and Goblins and the uh, Vampire Covenant ready uh, uh, to play with already. So I, I figured I could just uh, complete the collect collection with some, some more Horde armies, I guess. Good golly. Well, yeah, you'll get the whole set, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe Inferno the Wars would be a good pick then to uh, get some something different. All right, but... Um, Enough uh, shit chat about, about the news, I guess. Uh, we'll move on to the main topic of the show, which is tournaments and uh, going to them in general. Uh, so we can start really simple with the question, what is a tournament? What are tournaments? I assume that a tournament is any more than you know, it could be four guys, could be 300 people all in one venue if you want to get really basic to it. But it's an opportunity really to to get out and play, hopefully, people outside of your regular regular gaming group. Yeah. So normally we play in our in someone's basement or in a store, perhaps. But uh, this is the chance chance to get get out to. To meet new people and uh, play play some focus games, really. I think there's three kinds of people that generally go to tournaments. There's the hardcore uh, player that really wants to win, uh, often called the win at all costs player. There's the social player who just wants to go and see his friends and have a good time. And then there's the hobbyist who wants to go and see people's models and really beautiful painted armies and to draw inspiration from them. And ev I'm sure all of us have a little bit of each of those in us, but I think those are the three kinds of people that are generally drawn to tournaments. Yeah, uh, I can agree with that that assessment. I, I, I was just about, about to say that about people being a mix of all three probably, uh, because I sure can in the, identify with all of them. Uh, so we can uh, uh, look into it a little bit about uh, why we, you and I go to tournaments. Uh, you can start if you, yes, for your, your personal sake. Um, well, after, um, after the end times rolled through and uh, I was one of those people who had a, a lot of uh, angst about being out of a miniature game, um, I discovered the Ninth Age and I loved it so much that I decided that I would try and go to every tournament within two hours of me to try and support the hobby. Um, I, the One of the most important things, I think, is knowing that there are other people out there that are playing the same game as you so that you have opportunities um, just beyond the local people that you're playing. Um, nothing, every, everybody wants to be part of a bigger community. And uh, I wanted to support 
uh, whatever community, whatever that community was going to look like uh, by my attendance. Um, I got in as a staff member, not at the very beginning, but still in the early days. And um, I love miniature wargaming. I wanted it to succeed. Uh, there were a lot of splinter groups at the time, but I thought this had the best chance of succeeding. And again, I really liked the game. So for me, it was really just about supporting the hobby. But now that I've been going to them for a few years, um, I'm seeing a lot of the same people. Uh, I've never really been a big win at all cost player. I just I want to go and I want to see my friends and I want to have a good time. Uh, I allow myself one big tournament a year. Uh, let me rephrase that. My wife allows me <laughs> one big tournament a year. Um, and for that, I'm, I'll drive you know, five or six hours drive to uh, another state. Um, and those tournaments usually have 80 to 100 people. And that's sort of a whole guys weekend thing. But yeah, to get me out of the house, they're a good time. And I really like the people I get to play against. Yeah. You hit a, a lot of the, po the points there. Uh, but uh, so, so you didn't... Uh, play tournaments uh, before uh, Ninth Age? Uh, my claim to fame is uh, in um, Warhammer Fantasy Battle Days, I walked away with something from every tournament that I ever went to. All three of them. Even if it was I Best see. Sportsman. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. So um, you did some tournaments I, I did, before. Yeah, I didn't think the tournament scene was really uh, something that I wanted to get into, mostly because I was I'm such a slow painter, and I didn't want to field unpainted armies. Um, but when I started attending uh, tournaments for the Ninth Age, I really got the bug, and now uh, I want to go to them if I can. But for some reason, there's a conspiracy that every single tournament organizer wants to organize them on my wife's birthday my anniversary the one time a year when we do a big trip uh that kind of thing i see yeah that's unlucky yeah but i hit as many as i can how about you uh yeah i uh pretty much the same i guess uh, i go to tournaments uh mainly for for the people i have some friends uh that i only meet at tournaments so uh, but it's lovely to to, to meet, meet up with <clears throat> every time, um, and and also to meet new new people, of course. Especially the the few last tournaments that I that I've been to, I've been surprised by how many uh, new people I meet. Um, I was at a tournament a few weekends ago, the Swedish Championship, and. I think three out of five games I pl played against players that, that I hadn't met, met before. Nice. That's one of the reasons to go. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I also, a big reason for me to go, go is to see uh, see the hobby, as you, you said, and uh, showcase my own latest creations, which is one of the reasons that uh, nowadays that I'm working on new armies, that are not yet tournament ready. Uh, I'm not that excited to go to, go to tournaments um, uh, as I was perhaps a year ago, because I don't seldom have anything new for my uh, Berox Goblins or my uh, Vampire Covenant. <laughs> so um, yeah, but uh, th that will change soon, hopefully, when once I finish up with my new armies. How far are you willing to travel in order to go to a tournament? Ooh, not anywhere near as far, far as, as the numbers you stated. Um, <laughs> I once I went to a tournament up in uh, in Ume, um, which is uh, yeah uh, uh, about six hours drive up north, um, and that was uh, never again. <laughs> it was a decent <laughs> de de decent tournament, but it it just wasn't worth it. Uh, so now, now it's, if it's above two hours, I really have to stop and think about it. Uh, so a bit lazy, uh, but I, I guess that's one of the advantages just with a rather small country. Yeah. So, but I have been thinking about going to uh, some uh, a Nor Norwegian tournaments. Uh, there were some no Norwegian guys over at the Swedish Championship uh, this year, and actually they won. Oh, good uh, for them. 
yeah, both uh, first place, second place, and best painted. Okay. So yeah, the grud- grudge is on, I guess. <laughs> so uh, I know so- some people in Sweden will be going to to, to their their championship. So maybe I'll tag along. I haven't really decided it yet. yet. But yeah. Um, well, for those people out there who are listening who have never been to a tournament, definitely try a few. Um, not every tournament you're going to have the best time just because you, everyone goes in thinking, oh, I have a great chance of winning with this list. And sometimes you just get stomped and people are playing kick the baby with your army. But uh, try a few. Once people start recognizing you or you start recognizing other people, um, people hang out afterwards. It's generally a really good time definitely yep. worth the investment of a couple at least certainly uh, uh so i had a little script here but i seem we are going all over the place so. <laughs> with the discussion <laughs> sorry no 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 that's that's how it is uh let's see just trying to look up some points that we missed uh so yeah i, I think we'll, we'll we'll go back to the beginning uh, some broad strokes about uh what, what tournaments are so uh, there are generally two categories of tournaments, team tournaments and singles tournament. Um, so singles tournament is what I would call the normal tournament format. I think the vast majority of tournaments are in that format. Do you agree? I uh, definitely agree. Organizing team tournaments uh, takes three times the effort to coordinate everything. Yeah, uh, they are, I think we have two a year here in Sweden, something like that, uh, com- compared to like eight or ten tournaments in total. Um, so not that common here. Um, so uh, we can talk a little bit about what a team tournament is, I guess. Uh, so you have... You come in, t- in teams of uh, three to eight players, I think are the usual uh, formats. <clears throat> so e- equal size teams, uh, but depending on the tournament, they might choose different different numbers. So. Um, and then every team is paired against uh, another team in the uh, using the normal uh, Swiss uh, pairing system. I guess. Yep. And then each team uh, pairs up uh, their individual games for their players uh, in sort of a mini mini game, I guess. Have you played uh, team tournaments to any l- larger degree? Uh, I have not played many. Most of mine are, in fact, single tournaments. Um, I'm based out of San Diego, California. And so I don't have access to going to things like the ETC, um, which is the biggest, one of the biggest team tournaments in the world, I think. Yeah, I I Uh, think it's the, uh, maybe the the world, world, the the WTC, WTC. Yeah. Can't can't compete by the, but I still think that the ETC is bigger. So team tournaments over here uh, are not, um, not a big thing. Almost exclusively is uh, single person tournaments where your job is just to crush the opponent and get as many battle points as you can but of the few team tournaments that i've been to i was surprised of just how much i liked them they had a completely new dynamic to uh, the tournament scene um being knowing that you're also responsible to your teammates and the changes in the dynamic of on this game, you're just supposed to not lose points versus we need you to win big because your buddy just took a cannon to the face on turn one and we know he's now going from a win to a loss. Um, it's It adds an extra element, an extra dynamic that I'm not used to, but by far t- team tournaments are, for me, uh, a lot more fun than uh, just singles tournament. Not that I don't have fun at singles tournaments, I do, but team tournaments are just add that extra something that make it a little more intense. Yeah, I can uh, I can only agree. I, I only actually been to uh, one team, team tournament, 
uh, but that, that was a really really good experience. <laughs> One thing that I that I noticed about about it was that normally when you go you go out with some friends to a tournament and you play your games and then uh, you meet up for lunch and you go, go eat and then you talk about uh, about your games and generally people are not really that interested in listening to other people people's games they want to talk about their own game um, which is understandable but a bit of a shame but at a, <laughs> at a team tournament it's entirely different everybody wants wants to hear the details and you want to talk about what you can learn and how you can improve and all of that that so is absolutely true yeah it, it really changes the the, the the dynamic as you say um so yeah team tournaments um i uh, yeah i think we can agree that they are a nice uh, variation yeah so uh singles tournament then um the standard format is usually 4500 points tournament and, and uh, yeah really ninth age has made it very easy to host tournaments. You don't need to figure a lot of uh, things out for yourself. It just straight from the book. It works perfectly, perfectly well. So the the straight out of the out of the book game is uh, 4,500 points. The standard scenarios and um, yeah, not, nothing quirky about it really. Um, but some tournaments do mix it up a bit. Um, you have those kind of tournaments in the, over in the States too? We do. Um, they're usually 4,500 points. Um, there's the uh, usual categories of whoever gets the most battle points um, gets the best overall. Um, there's a painting competition for who has the best painted armies. Uh, there is the best general for whoever gets the most battle points straight out of uh, their games. And um, if the tournament is big enough, there's often prizes for best in race, um, whoever got the most battle points for of all the players of their particular race. Or at least that's the way it's generally run over here. Yeah, okay. What, one difference we th that I... Uh, I've thought of, I noticed it before from uh, listening to other people talk, talk about the scene in in the states. Uh, we don't usually have a uh, best overall prize. Uh, it's uh, really we, we have the best in, best painted and maybe a uh, a best sportsman and, and something like that. And then okay. there's the and I guess yeah, we have the best overall then, uh, but we don't have the best general, I guess. Interesting. Uh, the, it's kind of mashed t together because the uh, the points you get for uh, for for the battles is usually so um, so much larger than uh, the sum of the other points. So it's usually just uh, just the overall. That's the thing. Really. Hmm. There's a user named uh, you mentioned him, Henry P. Miller. Yeah. He ran it. He ran a tournament recently, and um, I wish I had gone to it, but unfortunately, he's on the other side of the planet from me. Um, yeah. In addition to he, the normal he's, categories, he's in Denmark, right? Um, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, he added in a couple of different options. Uh, you got one extra battle point if you submitted your list on time, which is just a way to encourage people to submit their lists on time. Yep. Uh, you got an extra battle point if you had any kind of a centerpiece model in your army. Because he is a modeling guy, he's an art guy, and he appreciates people who put effort into their armies. Uh, you got one extra battle point if you had any kind of freehand banner in your army. And I had never heard of that before, but I think that's awfully, yeah. awfully clever. Yeah, And then you could get five more battle points. And during one of the breaks, he gave everybody a questionnaire. And it was five trivia questions based on Ninth Age fluff and stories. And yeah. for every right answer you got, you got an extra battle point. I think encouraging um, a broader view than just trying to 
trying to win, trying to beat your opponents. Uh, I thought that was awfully clever and deserved special mention. It stuck out, and people in the U.S. are talking about that now. Okay, that's interesting to, that it has gotten spread like that. Um, yeah, that's really cool. I, I, I do. I host some tournaments of my own, uh, and one time we did a format uh, where we had a a quiz uh, on background. Uh, I think it was twenty tournament points. Uh, wow! Actually, actually, that could definitely uh, and, swing the outcome of the battle. Yeah, or the uh, outcome of the scores. Uh, and and that time we actually did, did have this this uh, format with um, uh, best overall one two three uh, places and then one prize for the best general. We tried that out. Uh, unfortunately, or well, I don't know. Uh, the guy who almost always wins our tournament. He's <laughs> There's so always one. Com- yeah, yeah. Uh, he's uh, so competitively minded that he. He has super studied all of the ninth age, age fluff before for the tournament, aced the, the the questions. The only one who got a full, full pot, <laughs> uh, the other ones weren't even close. So he he has took home the the best the, the fluff bunny award, the best in general and the best overall. <laughs> so so it, it it felt a bit ridiculous in that fashion. That's uh, funny. Yeah, but I guess it was well earned at least. There's a lot of material out there to read, so good for him for putting in that work. Yeah, it it was quite quite early on, so there wasn't that much. I, I think it it was even before the Wars, Warriors of the Dark God, Gods book, so it wasn't that much available at that time. Oh, okay. I, I did it mostly to, to make people realize that there actually is fluff. <laughs> some <laughs> some hadn't noticed, uh, and I got some some positive response on on that. Uh, notion that people actually realized that there was stuff available. So they, they opened it for the first time. <clears throat> I guess I'm spoiled because uh, I get the big overall view of the project, but uh, yes, there is a uh, metric ton of background information that has been written and is out there. We just haven't figured out ways to release it all yet, but it's there. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even the, the the stuff that is available to the public right now is it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Uh, so, uh, some other thoughts about format. Uh, some tournaments do uh, unique scenarios and such. Do you- Those are really popular over here in the U.S. There's mostly out of the rule book, but everybody usually comes up with at least one unique scenario. Okay, so so um, what one game per <clears throat> per uh, uh, tournament? Everybody plays a, a unique scenario. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's and cool. quite cool. often that scenario is not advertised ahead of time uh, in the tournament packs. They'll tell you what all the scenarios are, and sometimes that unique scenario is the one that's not listed. So you I don't see. know always what you're walking into. <laughs> That's interesting. I can tell you, if I did <clears throat> did a stunt like that, it would not be appreciated. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I usually run a, a lot of uh, crazy scenarios at my own tournament. Um, but if I don't release it in advance, people get really fed up. Fed up. <laughs> they want to build their lists with their, them in mind. Though later, I, I, the scenarios are so so crazy and. Uh, elaborate that it doesn't really you can't really build towards them anyway uh, i've had the the um, approach for quite a, lo- a long time that that uh, instead of assigning a a scenario for every round uh, each table has a a scenario and a deployment type assigned so when oh, you geez. roll up to the, to the table you you read what it is and this works fine for for the default scenarios so but you can also throw in a few unique ones if you want that to that too so <clears throat> that's a, a, also an approach unfortunately uh, there are quite few tournaments in Sweden that that use this approach uh, most of them are are uh, more default um, which i think is, is a real shame because i would love to go to some more 
crazy tournaments, but I think uh, my own tournament is uh, uh, saturating the market, basically. <laughs> so, and I don't play at my, my own tournament, so uh, no one else da- da- dares to, to do it. How big are the tournaments you usually run? Um, around 50, 50 players, something like that. that. That's not a small tournament. Nope, it's, uh, we're fairly happy with that. We, we do run uh, team tournaments uh, every, other, every other time, um, and we get something like 60 players for those. Okay. And a little less for the singles, usually. But no, it's, um, <clears throat> it's good. Um, there's one other tournament in Sweden that uh, really pushes the the limits of the uh, format uh, and that's the, the the tag team tournament ah uh, yes Where we haven't brought you, up the tag team tournament yeah that's the other kind of uh, of uh, team tournament i guess so you want to run through the format i need to take a sip sure um i don't know what the format is like uh where you are but here in the u.s um People generally bring a 2,500-point army. Um, it, has to, <clears throat> it has to be a legal army for your army. It has to obey the, the different percentages and uh, whatnot. But you are randomly paired with someone else. And between the two of you, you have about five minutes to come up with some form of a battle plan in order to beat your two opponents. And I've been paired with people where I've looked at their army and I thought, oh, we're so going to lose. And of course, I get wiped out right away and he struggles through and he somehow wins it after my valiant sacrifice. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was a, b- a good topic to, to bring up because I can th- tell you, we, ha- we have one t- tag team tournament in, in Sweden every year. It's the tag team tournament. And it's not that format. Oh. Uh, we don't r- randomize the, 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 the teams. You roll up with your partner and you play five games with this uh, companion army. So you have those two, and you build, build your list towards using those that, that combination. So that's that's a really big difference, actually. <laughs> there are definite advantages to your system. I can see advantages to, to both, but uh, yeah, really interesting to see here that it's, it's so different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in a situation like what you're describing, how would you work the magic system? Uh, it's really not an issue. You treat it as as one army, really. So you uh, um, you, you draw draw one card and you generate generate veil tokens and then you just cast away. Um, you you share the pool basically. And players have to decide amongst themselves who has the better spell to cast. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to 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 work work that out. How how do you do it in your tournament? Um, pretty much the same way. Uh, however, I am one of those few players uh, who thinks that magic is a complete waste of time. So <laughs> I do not bring wizards in my infernal dwarf army. I see. That I guess that makes it e- easier for to uh, for for the opponent to decide what to do with the magic. <laughs> exactly. And, and, uh, and, uh, of the opponent. That, that that's the wrong term. The 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 partner. Yes. Well, same same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but how do you cal- calculate your the, the end score? I mean, you 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 share the point for the, your victory, I guess. So it's twenty zero, and then you you go on to the next table and you try to get as much point from each game uh yes you, you're um uh, for example if you if you came out with a, a 15-5 win you would each get 15 points um into your point total for the tournament okay and then you're you're pa- paired with uh, someone else who has around 15 points against the two opponents who have around 15 points uh The pairings are done, um, the person with the highest point total gets paired with the person who has the lowest point total, and then their combined point totals are matched to to an equivalent point total, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. That's really interesting. So so you get (laughs) one good player and one poor player, basically, in every team. Yeah, and the scores are, are 
it's it's a race uh, of of scores that way. It's very rare to see somebody really break ahead and and uh, they're guaranteed to win a tournament because they're so dependent on upon uh, who they get paired up with and their contribution to the to the game. Yeah, and I guess that uh, I, I was wondering a little bit about uh, another issue there, uh, but it's not an issue in that format uh, uh, because you, you have every incentive now to just try and do as good as possible because you're not competing with your with your partner really because you are at the other ends of the spectrum to a large degree. Degree. Exactly. So exactly. You, you you don't mind if if your partner gets a high score. So, no, not at all. And in those tournaments, it's um, generally speaking, this is very, very generally speaking, but um, it's uh, much more camaraderie in the room, much less um, win at all costs. And I actually don't see a lot of win at all cost players anymore. I think uh, a balanced rule set has driven a lot of them away. I can only agree. Uh, I've noticed the, the same thing. <clears throat> over here and the, the that uh, the tight tight team tournament it's it's just for the lulls basically everybody is, is there to have a really good time yeah yeah it's uh much more relaxed uh much more friendly but still competitive and still a ton of fun yep uh, definitely um so let's see here <clears throat> Uh, sorry, just looking through my notes. Um, That's all right. I'm admiring your ability to paint and talk at the same time. It, my my lack of ability, you mean? Because not right now, I'm just super confused there. <laughs> uh, let's see. We talked about scenarios. Uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, terrain and uh, special rules and such as. as the, uh, at tournaments, so, so I, I guess these uh, uh, tournaments that you have, where uh, one game has uh, a unique scenario, uh, you don't have unique terrain generally. Generally, not unless the scenario specifically involves um, that terrain piece. But that, then you would have to get one one of those terrain pieces for every table. So I guess it's Ex- a bit. Yeah, which is is often a challenge. Yeah. Uh, and unless you're running um, a big tournament or you have a uh, crazy horde of of uh, terrain that you hide in your garage, it's pretty hard to have that that level of customization. In a lot of the yep. tournaments that I see locally, um, not the bigger tournaments, but locally where there's you know 15 to 30 people, um, a lot of the terrain that's going to be on your table just depends on what is available actually in the store that you're playing at not a lot of people have that um, that huge uh, collection of terrain that they can bring with them every time yeah um, in the this this setting that uh, <clears throat> that we run uh, uh, from time to time with uh, where each, each table has a scenario it's really easy to implement some unique terrain rules as well, um, because you just have that single table to worry about then. When you lay out your terrain, do you use the terrain pack that Ninth Age provides, or do you just randomly put your terrain down to suit your own needs? Uh, good question to ask. We, I never use the the uh, terrain pack. I think it's awful, or the the map pack. <laughs> I think it's called. Uh, that's a, a, one thing that that is also part of the, the so-called st- standard for- format, I guess, with this uh, default placement of terrain. But I I I just don't like that. It's uh, it gets so stale after a while. I think some people love it, and some people absolutely have no use for it at all. <laughs> yep. It's really a matter of preference. But there's no yep. wrong way to go. A- no, nope. I think in, in Sweden though, we, there's like. I don't think any tournament uses them anymore. The uh, the Swedish Championship uh, had it a few times because they wanted to to have a, that to be the the bog standard tournament. But uh, even even the, the the people who who were hosting that got fed up with it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, when you play on the same maps over and over and over, you kind of learn the uh, the best points to play for your army. So I can understand that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and recently, one thing that that they, they've started doing in tournaments here in Sweden is to intentionally uh, place the uh, the terrain in a, a very uneven fashion where one side is at an advantage. Okay. Uh, to try and um, compensate for the, uh, the the player who chooses sides <clears throat> usually doesn't get a, get the first turn, so you, they want to give an advantage to to choosing sides, basically. Yep. Which I I completely understand. I've been on tables that have had very lopsided terrain, and uh, it definitely impacts the battle. Yep. <clears throat> uh, so. Um, one rather sim- simple question, I think. When you choose a tournament to go to, do, what do you base your choice on? Do you, is there anything that especially draws your attention? Um, I am a tournament whore. I will go to any tournament that's near me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so proximity is the, is the answer. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. The, um, the real... Uh, determining factor of whether I go to a tournament or not is uh, am I free to go uh, with what I'm going on in my personal life? I want to go to every tournament, but sometimes it's just not feasible. Uh, we've all got responsibilities to um, our jobs, our families, and our friends. And as much as I love everything about the Ninth Age, um, you know that priority has to take precedence. But I do attend as many tournaments as I can. And I really don't care what kind of a tournament. I just want to go to tournaments, which yeah, is that, probably a very poor answer for what you're looking for. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I was uh, pretty much uh, out for if you prefer the, the the wacky style tournaments or the or the standard format, basically. But uh, yeah, I guess it's not that important to you. I'm lucky that I get a good mix of both. Um, yeah. So if uh, I, I do try and attend every team tournament that I can go to. Not that there's a whole lot of them, but um, because those team tournaments add that extra little, um, the extra the extra camaraderie, which is what I really enjoy in in tournaments now. Um, if I can go to those, that would be my number one pick. Okay, yeah, and I, and I guess that uh, if if the camaraderie and uh, and all of that is the main. Uh, attraction of a tournament it doesn't really matter what the format is Nah, yeah it really yeah. doesn't the, the, the Back- team tournament t- team tournaments of course has another appeal then but the, the the scenarios and such doesn't affect that no back when i was a younger more handsome man i went to tournaments to win all i wanted to do was win to prove i was the best and that i was going to crush my opponents and all that kind of good stuff but um that harkens back to um back to the earlier days i i think now um i think i matured a little bit and i i now appreciate tournaments much more for the social aspect than the than the glory that they bestow upon you okay yeah uh, i i can relate to that i i used to play a lot more competitively uh, i think uh, not that I was ever really successful at it, but nowadays I I, I don't play as much in in my in my everyday life, so I, I my skills have gone down a lot, I guess. So it's difficult to to get those everyday games in for me. Yeah, back uh, back in the day, I was going to the game store every weekend or every second weekend, uh, but now I play. A few times every month or a couple of months. Um, yep. Just how is it that as you get older, you start making more money so you can buy more stuff, yet you get more respons- responsibilities, <laughs> so you can't go and play as often. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a real shame. It's an unfair mathematical equation, <laughs> I tell you. Somebody should do something about that. Hmm. <laughs> we age backwards or something like that. Yeah. Well, if you come up with a fix for it, let me know. <laughs> I think the, the answer is just, just don't get a life outside of hobby. Yeah, that's not a really good answer, but <laughs> if I come up with something, I'll let you know. Yeah, that's good. 
Okay, so uh, going through my notes here, one of my points was traveling to tournaments. We have already d discussed uh, the time we're, we're willing to spend going to a tournament, to the travel time, but uh, some different means. Um, I think it's mostly car in the States. Mm, yes and no. I think it is mostly car. Um, I drive to all my tournaments. I would. I don't think I'd be comfortable putting my army on a plane because you would have to take it as carry on. Um, yeah. But I do know that for there's a big tournament called the Buckeye Battles. Yeah, and, I, uh, the, the, the name rings a bell. It's it's a hundred person tournament. It's it's yeah. fairly big, and um, I know a bunch of guys from my area. They uh, they piled into a minivan. I, I think they rented the minivan. They piled into it. And they drove 30 some hours in two days Ooh. to get there for the tournament. <laughs> oh, they, that's, they, that, that, that's dedication. They drove up on, um, they, they left on Friday morning. Uh, they got there just in time for the tournament on Saturday. They played all day Saturday, all day Sunday. They drove back Monday. And they said <laughs> it was so much fun, but it was so not worth it. <laughs> Yeah, that's some dedication. That's yep. 30 hours. That's <laughs> that's yeah. a long time to be sitting in a car with a bunch of guys eating Slim Jims and burritos. <laughs> yeah, the, the States really is a huge country. So I, I guess we, 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 I, I'd be going down to somewhere like, where, like Italy or something. <laughs> 30 hours. <laughs> well, in mean, in Europe, correct me if I'm wrong, but plenty of people will jump on a plane with their army and they have no problem flying to a, you know, a country not too far away with their army for a big tournament, right? Yeah, I mean, people do it, definitely. I, I've never tried it, but uh, for the ETC, uh, definitely people are fly flying in from all over the world, even, even the States. Uh, and somehow they bring their armies along with them. Yeah, well, there are uh, people, I, but... Yeah, I, 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 I'm with you that I, I, I'm very doubtful that i would ever uh, ever dare that i mean the, the nightmares and all you you do you have to have to take it in in your in your carry-on luggage of course because you you won't let anyone else handle handle your army and toss it around and no like no 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 but but night, nightmare scenario is standing there at the, the at the security check check in <laughs> and, and they just see this pointy pointy uh, metal spears in your ca in your box and you you can't bring it along <laughs> exactly <laughs> and and what the hell do you do in that situation uh, or even it, worse they they point at your dread elf spearman and say i'm sorry that spear is pointy that could be used as a weapon and it's like <laughs> no they're dread elves they couldn't be a weapon trust me <laughs> i've tried <laughs> they're terrible yeah but the strange, strange thing is, I never heard of anyone, anyone actually having this problem. I've talked a little bit about to, 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 to people who, who do travel like the, uh, that, that travel with their armies, and it never seems to be a problem. Uh, the worst I've actually heard was somebody dropped their case, or um, they they flew to the ETC and went, "Oh, I forgot all my movement trays." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. things happen, but. Yeah, I I don't think I'd be comfortable getting on a plane with a with an army in my hand. Uh, seems like a dangerous proposition, but people seem to do it. So they do. And, they and, do. and really, uh, uh, it feels surprising that they, they they would let you onto a plane with with some of this this stuff. I mean, the the, the movement trays that, that I'm using for my coming armies are from magnetic movement trays, mm -hmm. and they, they have a steel sheet in the bottom. That's if you yep. just remove the the, tree, uh, the the wooden brim, that's <laughs> that's a weapon. <laughs> I guess it could be, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. You have to know when you go through security. They look at that. They look at you. They look at your army. They look at you and they think, man, this guy's just a big dork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he's completely harm harmless. <laughs> But that's okay. They don't understand the goal. They don't understand the passion. Yeah, it's uh, difficult to grasp, I guess, from an outsider's point of view. Um, but when people travel by plane, what do they store their armies in? 
Yeah, that was actually the next point uh, that are on my list, uh, how to tra transport your army. Um, so we can just go through the, the, the options, I guess. Um, so I've seen, seen some people just using a large box, nothing fancy about it. Uh, you said you stored, stored your army in some large boxes. Well, I thought they were safe in my garage and yeah, uh, really big Tupperware containers basically. But when I travel to a game store, um, I grab the models that I need out of those cases and I put them, it's, um, it's almost like a piece of luggage with a clear front. Um, it's got metal uh, trays and then I've got magnets on the bottom of the movement trays so they generally yeah. don't shift around too much as I drive yeah yeah th th that's one of the the, the better options I think uh, I haven't used it myself but I've seen m m many people do the the, the magnetized uh, option yeah yeah um. <clears throat> it was a, it was a little bit spendy but uh, it was worth it it's yeah, it's yeah. a lot better for me than than bringing a, a giant um, Tupperware container to a gaming store. Yeah, I I, I know some people do that. The the, the guy I, I usually go to tournaments with, with uh, he he always has his arm in just a, a large plastic box, uh, and it goes fine for him really. Um, some some sometimes something can break off, but it's not not worse than other options. Uh, it seems. I guess yeah. it, it depends a little bit on on your army and such. Uh, Personally, I use uh, foam um, carry cases, uh, the old Games Workshop uh, ones. Mm -hmm. But there are there are many options on on, on the market for that sort sort of thing. And while it's uh, the the transportation feels safe as long as the lid lid stays closed, uh, <laughs> but uh, the Putting, p packing up and packing down is such a tedious work. It's, Especially yeah. when you have to move from just one table to the table next to you, or two tables down. It's just enough that you have to put it back in the box to move it efficiently. Yeah, uh, that that I don't don't, don't do. do. The, the the foam trays I only use for the transportation, um, but it's something that I always bring along to the tournaments a a transportation tray, just to move up all the all the, the, the entire army on and take it to the next table uh let's see here so um that uh, brings us up to the next point on my list uh what to what to bring to a tournament uh i think the number one thing to bring to any tournament is knowing your army. I don't know how many people I've played where they've said, they put down their army, they're all excited, they've got that glint in their eye, and they say, oh yeah, and this is the first time I've ever played this army. Yeah, and that's I me. die that, a little bit inside. <laughs> that, that's me every time. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, since I don't, don't get that many games in, in my usual uh, schedule, I, uh, it's often that... Uh, the, the, the games that I play at the tournament is are, are the games one to five with that particular list. Oh no, I'm and, not talking that list. I'm talking that. Oh, army. okay, okay, yeah, that's that's a different story then. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just understanding your army's rules. You don't have to memorize every bit of offensive skill and defensive skill. If you need to look those up every now and then, that's okay. But not understanding some of the basic rules, you know. If you're playing a Beast Herds army, you should probably understand your ambushing mechanic. Yeah. You know? Just same same the, with Undyne, Undyne Dynasties. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's, that's another great example. Um, and when you go to a tournament, um, understand that it might be just down the road for you, but other people might have driven two hours, three hours, whatever, to be there. Um, don't be a jerk understand that everybody comes here for for their own reasons um i think everyone who attends a, t in a tournament no matter whether they're a good player or a bad player everyone should strive to win the best sportsmanship category yeah play a play a friendly game 
there's no need to be a real jerk. If you if you have an honest disagreement about a rule, that's fine. That just happens. But don't don't treat your opponent like like he's the bad guy because nobody's a bad guy. We all go there to have fun and to play with other people. Yeah, well said. Um, I can only agree. Um, and and for the most part, I think it's true. That's what people people do. I, it's <clears throat> very seldom that you encounter bad sportsmanship at tournaments. I think it hasn't happened to me too many times. There's definitely been people I haven't wanted to play twice, but I've never really had any of those bad horror stories experiences that I've heard other people talk about. I maybe I've been lucky, or maybe I just have the right attitude that I've been. I avoid those people, and it doesn't come out on the table. I don't know. I think that the, the scene has uh, changed a bit there. Uh, I seem to recall that there there was more bad sports in the in the good old old days of uh, Warhammer Eighth Edition. But it War- might be a colored lens. No, I think you're right. The Warhammer Eighth um, Edition, well, Warhammer in general, their rules were always uh, quirky, and they actually encouraged min-maxing, power gaming, and win-at-all-costs kind of lists. Um, I I remember playing Tomb Kings with my three Dispel Dice and them showing up with 12 Power Dice. Um, (laughs) You know, the, the, oh, I rolled double six, pick up half your army lists. The, like, that's just not fun. Nobody really wants to play against that anymore. And because that's not available in the Ninth Age, I think... Um, those kind of players aren't really drawn to it. Um, maybe they're drawn to other games. I don't know. Or maybe it's just, um, I think the gaming community has matured a little bit uh, in the absence of those kind of rules. Back in the day, um, Warhammer Fantasy was really the only fantasy game in town. So nobody really knew better. But I think people do know better now, and they want more balanced tournament rules than they want... Um, the weird wacky dumb stuff like (laughs) yeah yeah i I can't think of a single person that would want to go back to the animosity rule or oh there there are plenty of people on the forums who want something like that at least oh geez i i okay maybe i just can't think of a single orc and goblin player i don't know yeah uh, as an Orc and Orc- Goblin players, I, I can say not not your animosity rule that was, but I think I would like something to capture a bit, bit of an unruly feel to the army. But it all depends on, on what the Ninth Edge com- comes up with uh, for Fluff and uh, also so. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure they will be treated appropriately. And by appropriately, <laughs> they're not my army, so they'll all be strength two, offensive skill two. <laughs> Yeah, look forward to that. <laughs> just, just for you, just for you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> then, then maybe that can act, act as motivation to get these uh, other armies done. <laughs> you know, that's one thing we haven't talked about, and that's one thing that tournaments are really, really good for: encouraging yeah. people to paint their armies. Yeah, that's true. How many armies, how many units have you gone, geez, I want to use them at that tournament in a couple of days, and I really need to get them painted. And they've been sitting on your shelf for one, two, three years, and you're like, yep, I'm going to get them to tabletop quality in the next 48 hours. Yeah, it has happened. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. Uh, I, I try to avoid it nowadays. Uh, I, I have a, a schedule of things to paint. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, it happens. It does. It does. Um, but going back to your original question, uh, bring enough dice. Bring uh, objective yeah, markers. Yeah, we, we, we can can go go more of an, a, a material route, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah. Uh, dice and uh, markers. Dice markers. Uh, a real uh, uh, measuring tape of some kind, not some hokey i made this myself kind of stick those bother me <laughs> do people bring that 
I have seen a couple. Yeah, they've. I don't. I don't know where they get them. I. I, I have no idea. Um, and if you can print off the magic cards you've got for your list, having those in front of you really helps your opponent. So yeah. that when he asks what a spell does, you can just hand him the card, and he has no questions about it. Yeah. Magic cards are really, really important thing to bring. It yeah. makes the whole thing so much is easier. Uh, same as fl flax cards, <clears throat> you want those. Uh, yes. Yep. Those as well. Prints out nicely. Um, it can really bother me when people don't have them printed out in a nice fashion. Um, or something like not uh, a uniform background and something like that. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, <clears throat> not not the greatest. I don't think this happens too much at tournaments, uh, but don't have your army list on Battlescribe on your phone. Print off your army list. Yeah, uh, that's a good advice too. Yeah, uh, for the, the the flex cards, I, I really rec recommend getting some card sleeves from um, for, for Magic the Gathering or something like that, and put them in. Then you have the super uniform form background and you can't you can't cheat in any way try and re memorize the the background and such <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen anybody with magic cards that don't have those sleeves on them yeah they're great and they keep them in decent shape for you as well yeah that too uh, one thing that i can, can recommend though that i i, I uh, haven't seen that many people use is to put uh, a real magic card or a Pokemon card or whatever in the in the sleeve as well, because then you get the the rig rigidness of that card, so it's oh. a much better feel to the to the whole thing. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, that could work too. Um, something that I've seen on some of the online battle reports, and I haven't got these myself, but I think it's a brilliant idea. They are uh, ninety degree. Uh, pieces of plastic that you yep. put behind every movement tray and that way you mark where your unit started and that way you can move it wherever you need to and if you're ever not sure you can move it back to where it was because you've got that piece of plastic there from before you moved it yep those are great i, I actually got some of those from um, uh, magnetic movement trays recently uh however i forgot them to bring them to the tournament <laughs> 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 so uh, uh, great in theory, uh, not great in ex execution for my part. <laughs> well, I think that those a set of those will be uh, possibly my next my next purchase for my gaming supplies. Those look absolutely brilliant. Too many times in games, I think it's happened to everybody where somebody moves a unit and somebody else has a question about it, and then they move it back, and you're sure that's not right where it was, and yeah. stuff yeah. stuff happens. Yeah, and th those discussions are really. I mean, it, it, using this can seem like a very gamey move, that you want to uh, move back and forth and try every possible combination and try and, and get the, the absolute best way to, to your movement. And some people do that, of course, and it, and, and it can slow the, the movement phase down a bit. Yeah. But the, the upside is that it's, it shuts down arguments. It's, yes. If you... Even if you're having a super friendly game and all of that, if someone picks up a unit and then just something happens and you have to place it back where it was, it's so much simpler if you had a marker down there. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of those, there is an often forgotten about or ignored rule uh, in that a lot of people uh, don't apply to tournaments, but it's specifically meant for tournaments. When you're playing with your buddy in your garage or your basement. You can do whatever you want. But in a tournament, <clears throat> the rules specifically state you move one unit, then you move the next unit. That doesn't mean, oh, I, I, you know, I've moved three units, and oh, this one's a little bit in the way, so I'm going to nudge it over a little bit. Nope, you've already moved that unit. If you've got those movement uh, markers we're talking about, I wouldn't have a problem with you going back because I know where your unit started. But as far as moving and then nudging, uh, that is technically cheating, and I know it bothers a lot of people. I'm okay with it sometimes, but there's been times when it's happened and it's made a huge difference, and it becomes a problem. 
Okay. In Sweden, we have a, a I think, quite generally uh, uh, agreed upon rule that as soon as you make a decision or your opponent makes a deci- decision or some rolls a die, then you lock down the movement up to, up into to that point. But as long as nothing has happened, there are no decisions, you can always backtrack and adjust the nudge all, all, the, all, day, all day long. Of course, you have, still have to move th- things in a legal way, so you can't you can't physically just switch places with two units because one would have to move first and then the other would ha- have to move. Um, but as, as long as you don't ro- roll dice, you are generally allowed to, to backtrack in Sweden. And, and then those those markers are really, ha- really, really helpful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I guess as long as you know what the general rules are when you go in, um, it's that's totally fine. When I sit down with my opponent, um, I give them a clear outline of what I'm expecting, and that's that any dice that is even is even remotely cocked, I reroll no matter what, yep. and um, measure to the tray or so measure to the model, not the tray, things like that. Um, yep. One, yeah, one, it, one inch spacing rules to other units and to terrain. Some people play those differently. Yes, yes. So it's it's good to know know where you where you're at before the game begins. Yeah, uh, talk about the terrain that you're you've got in front of you. Is the terrain that entire piece, or is it just the building sitting on that that piece? Um, yeah. Is the entire thing water, or is it just the painted blue parts? You know, those kind of questions can make a difference later on in the game. Yeah, it's always good to sort those things out beforehand. Yeah, and also don't be afraid to ask your opponent questions. Hey, I'm moving my my unit here because I want to make sure he's out of line of sight. Do you agree that he's out of line of sight of that unit? You have a better angle than me. Yes, great. Let's move on. Yeah, that 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 attitude is it can save a lot of arguments. Yes, yes, definitely. Like I said, go into a tournament. Um, you know, be friendly, be be reasonable, and if someone has a question like that, answer it honestly, and don't be afraid to ask the same thing back. Yep. Okay, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> oh, <laughs> one thing that I've I've seen people bring to tournaments, I've only seen it once, and I've long intended to mm-hmm. to replicate it, but I it's never gotten around to it. And that is, I saw a person bring along some uh, uh, Lego bricks to our tournament. Why? You, uh, it's really ingenious. You know when you're, uh, you want to place your unit on a hill? Ah. You kind of place it in an angle, then, uh, yeah. and, and you, ha- you have some, some stuff in your vicinity that you can place it un- under and, and try to balance it. To. Balancing it on you, dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dice is the, the usual, yeah. Uh, but when you have have the Lego bricks, you can build a tower of the correct height and just go ahead. That's so I think... actually clever. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've only seen it once, but I, I really want to ma- replicate it because it seems so so handy. You know, I think you should just get extra points if you did bring those and you had that Lego army that apparently somebody played at the ETC. Ooh, yeah, yeah, the, the, <laughs> that rumored army, yes. <laughs> I, I have pl- plans to do to do a a show later about uh, Visivig. What you see is what you get, and uh, that army will definitely be, be discussed there. That I haven't time. even seen okay. pictures of it, but I'm curious. Everybody yeah. said it was really well done. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a sensitive topic for some. Yes, we have had um, back in when I was a moderator, um, twice the topic broke out of WYSIWYG and it was a pretty even split in the community. Half wanted WYSIWYG and and loved the idea and half didn't care for it because there's no official models for the game. Um, it's a it's a sensitive topic and yeah, some people love it, some people hate it. Yep, definitely. And those topics usually got very heated for no reason. And it, you have to always remember when whether you're playing this game or whether you're on the forums, it doesn't matter. We're talking about a game where we're pushing our little dollies across the table. Yes, it's good to <laughs> to state that out loud sometimes. <laughs> it is. It, 
I, I mean, as much as we love the game and as much passion as we put into it, it's just a game. Yeah. Good to remember. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, playing games at tournaments. Um, some things to keep in mind. Uh, time limits. Something that you usually don't have at your games at home. Do you have any special approach to handling time limits? Um, several of the tournaments that I've been to, not all of them, but several of them have said if you don't finish all six turns of your game, um, you each lose one battle point for each turn not finished. Okay. And that, enc- that encourages people to not slow play you. Yeah, we, we had some similar approaches here in Sweden too. Uh, generally, the the first ones are free, though, so you can you get some. You can be late a few games, uh, but not all of them, basically. I've uh, I've played a couple of tournaments where I've I've played a player, and legitimately in both cases it was a newer player, and we only got to turn three. Ooh. And yeah, that that kind of stinks a little bit. And it, again, it yep. came down to those were issues where he had to look everything up. He second-guessed every question he made, and he didn't know his army. Yeah. But it happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure, it, it ha- happens that you're, you're late, uh, or you can't finish one of your games. But if it's, if it's a habit, then you really need to, to do something about it. Yes, yes. And if you know that you're a slow player, you might need to practice just speeding up your games. Um, playing fast is a skill that's definitely acquired in in uh, experience. Yep, certainly. So, um, how do you stay sharp throughout the tournament? I uh, mean, the, the game game three on the first day uh, is it's always a challenge. I think it is. Um, I am a candy smuggler. I will always have candy at my table and I'll munch on it throughout the day. But, uh, you know, after usually by the the third game of the day, my voice is pretty hoarse and it's no longer a lot of laughing and and joking about stuff. It's more of just pointing at stuff and holding (laughs) out three three fingers for I'm hitting on threes and four fingers for wounding on fours and rolling dice. (laughs) Yeah, I've been there. Especially when there's, it's a small enclosed room and there's, you know, 40 people in there and everybody's yelling and yeah, it, it can be tough, but, uh, uh, yeah. drink a lot of water. I don't know why, yeah. but I go through, a, I, I, I dehydrate like crazy in those little rooms. Yeah. No, it, it, that's a good, really good advice. Stay hydrated. It makes a huge difference. And also munching on some candy, not the healthiest perhaps, but uh, it's uh, ne- quite necessary, I think. Well, hey, if you're going for best sportsmanship, bring some candy and don't be afraid to share it with your opponent. Yeah, the <laughs> bribes the best solution. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Yeah, what's oh, the uh, what's the, the um, super secret staying alert system on your side of the planet? I mean, I just have to sneak it, sneak in this little uh, internal joke for 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 the ninth edition. So of course, it's the keto diet. Really? No. <laughs> 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 I, you you might have missed it, but but it it was a stupid joke joke on the forum so for a while about how ninth edition players have this keto diet, uh, and that's why they play this super advanced game. Ah, no, okay. Lazy, lazy people who eat at McDonald's, they couldn't possibly handle such a game like this. It's true. McDonald's food will make you sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's um, staying staying hydrated and and eating some candy is a good good advice, I think. Yeah. But generally, thinking about what you what you eat can can be well worth it, and maybe also what you drink. Um, I don't know how how it is in the states but in in sweden almost every tournament is hosted at a at a school um which means that there's a strict alcohol uh provision um there's very rarely alcohol at the tournaments in the u.s or actually i've never been to a tournament where there is alcohol i think i've seen a couple of people have um those giant um soda cups and i'm pretty sure that they've actually put something in there, whether it's 
vodka or whiskey or Coke or whatever it is. There's something. Uh, or some guys love to get a beer with their lunch uh, between games. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, um, I know. Uh, I get so dehydrated on these things that uh, I'll just stick with plain old boring water or iced tea. Yeah. Um, I know some some people have though there's no no alcohol at the tournaments uh, in in Sweden. Some people go out at uh, at the night and uh, drink quite a lot, and some of them never never come back to to the tournament. So, wouldn't advise doing that doing so. The stories that I've heard from the ETC uh, have been pretty wild. People just going out and and having to be dragged back to their room because they can't even walk and showing up for games the next morning and just losing horribly uh, the, my, my favorite story is is quite the same but he won hor- horribly i have only been t- t- told this story by, by by a friend of mine uh but basically he he was just uh, i think he was still drunk on the morning Oh jeez! Uh, barely knew knew where he was, uh, and and uh, the, the the guys, his teammates, just told him to stay in the in the deployment zone, and you'll you'll be fine. You have a good match up here, uh, Oaks, <laughs> Goblin, Oaks and Goblins versus Empire. You just stay in the in, in your deployment zone. And then a while later, they come back to the table, and he's pushed everything straight forward, <laughs> right at the enemy. <laughs> and then a, a few a few turns later. The entire opponent's army is wiped out, and he's staying in the opponent's deployment zone. That's <laughs> well, the way he, he he understood it. Stay in the opponent's deployment zone. <laughs> so he just pushed straight across the table, <laughs> obliterated everything, and uh, took a 20, 20 zero. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of game you like to watch. <laughs> yeah, certainly. <laughs> No, I would. Uh, I, I think I'd play incredibly poorly if there was alcohol in my system. So good for yeah. good for those people that can pull that off. But those days are behind me. Yeah, I, I've heard about uh, the uh, uh, the WTC um, where they give you beer. Yeah, you <laughs> heard about that too. I That's... did free beer. Yeah, um, that seems crazy. It does, uh, but um, you know, people had a great time, um, and you know, for the people that got on a plane and flew for four, eight, ten hours to be there, I'm glad that they went and they had a good time and they enjoyed the experience for however they did it. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, those uh, those kind of tournaments don't happen in the U.S. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I said uh, that we our tournaments are usually in in schools, um, mm-hmm. but I understand that that's not really the case in the states. Um, they're. They're all over the place in the States. I've uh, played in school gymnasiums. I have played in uh, gaming stores. We rented a hall above a bar at the last one. Um, It's really finding an affordable space um, that is willing to let us uh, bring in the tables and the mats and all that stuff that we need. Uh, Finding a venue that has um, food close by. so that people can run out, grab a quick lunch, and then get back to their games. Um, and um, a lot of the big tournaments down here actually rent out ballrooms in uh, ho- various hotels. It's just a matter of what's affordable, uh, what facilities do they have. It's got to be near an airport if it's a bigger tournament so people can fly in. Um, I guess that's something we're really lucky about having is there's a ton of good infrastructure here in California, and that gives us a lot of options. We don't have to be right downtown to get them. Um, sometimes it's easier to to play at a uh, a smaller location um, because it's just cheaper. So it's a balancing match that you tournament organizers kind of have to have to walk through. And I know it's not always easy. I've heard of people spending six months, eight months, just trying to find a venue that works sometimes. Yeah, <clears throat> it can be tricky, for sure. And I, for the people who um, don't know, 
tournament organizers generally don't, I don't think, at least here in the U.S., they're not making money by hosting tournaments. They do it out of just love of the game and and to be with their friends. Um, and quite often, they even end up putting their own money into it on top of the attendance fees that they're collecting from us. So when you're at a tournament, kind of keep that in mind and definitely thank the tournament organizer because what you don't see is the endless amounts of hours that he's poured in trying to organize everything for your benefit. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's not easy. No. And um, I think I don't don't think there's uh, those who 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 spend money out of, out of their own pockets here in in Sweden for for hosting tournaments, but um, <clears throat> the hours that you spend in, put into it is uh, is still well worth a, a thank you at least. Yes. Yeah. Do you provide food at your tournaments or no? Uh, some do. Uh, okay. It's not not that common, uh, but some have l- lunch or options and such. Yeah. Sometimes there's just a, a giant tray of of sandwiches or pizza, or sometimes people are just expected to fend for themselves. It all depends. It varies by tournament. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we usually have uh, uh, some some snacks at least, uh, chocolate and such. Oh. Okay. For safe, but uh, not not uh, sell, sell them something larger or uh, maybe maybe some some easier uh, lunch but not not that much usually the only thing that's available is bottles of bottled water okay yeah but then again this is the united states where um you know you get you get sued for coffee being hot so (laughs) nobody wants to bring in subway sandwiches and get a get sued for food poisoning or something silly Okay. Yeah. Yep. We'll call that a regional difference, right? N- yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> we haven't had any such is- issues here. Well, uh, I haven't heard of any in the local gaming tournament, but <laughs> no. trust me, there's always going to be a first. It's going to happen. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I've gone through all of my notes that I had intended do you have any closing thoughts um only to reiterate how much fun tournaments really are and how much um i think they're they're definitely worth going to if for no other reason to support your local gaming community because everybody wants to be able to play against new players it gives you a chance to play against armies that you don't normally get to play against and play against tactics of um players that you don't get to play against you might be a really good player and sometimes you want to you might be the top player in your area and you want to look for other high-end players that you're just not finding you might be a lower level player that wants to get better and you want the experience of seeing different kinds of people playing that you can apply to yourself so there's a lot of benefits for it not just the social aspect but go to a tournament and try it get everything that you can out of it but the most important thing is go there and have a good time, whether you win or whether you lose. Yeah, I agree. There are countless reasons to to go to a tournament. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, it, it, even if you get smashed all the all all, all the day long, uh, you might just learn, learn a few, few few new things about your army and such. Yeah, definitely. Maybe even more than if you only only win. I've learned more from my losses than I have from my wins. So that's definitely true. Any okay. other last pieces of gossip or news that you have questions about? No, I think I've said about what I want to say. And I'm also asked about finish with this model too. Oh, you've got to show it before we're done. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yes, notice that I hadn't painted the handle on her little sword here (laughs) well thank you very much for having me on your podcast this has been fun yeah it was great having you on so let's see here if i can get some light on this model is that focused Um, pretty close nice freehand on the cloak yeah thank you i'm gonna do something on the outside as well but i haven't quite figured out what what yet You know, that model would look a little bit better if you just turned it into an Infernal Dwarf. 
<laughs> yeah, sure. That's uh, that's an e- easy transformation to make. <laughs> Just a small conversion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I might actually paint up a, a, an Inferno Dwarf mo- model one of the, the, these days. I uh, uh, there was a competition held by by this uh, Karak Norm clan, clansman who mm-hmm. ma- makes the uh, Admiralty miniatures over on the Chaos Dwarfs uh, forums. They yep. had a, a competition for writing <clears throat> rules for a skirmish game that I entered uh, and uh, got second place. So I won a small little little Chaos Dwarf model. Yeah, congratulations. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you. So might might just paint out, paint that up, not as a statue. <laughs> we will see. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, as I said, well, thank you for coming on. And, I appreciate uh, you having me on. Of course, you are welcome back uh, anytime you want. I think I already have you written up for uh, another episode uh, down the line. Um, about starting new armies, I think it was, or painting new armies, something like that. Yeah, could be. Uh, I will look forward to it. Yeah, uh, might be a while before I get to that, but we'll we'll see. Uh, and thank you to all of you who have been watching, if you have made it th- this far. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it. So, cheers. Cheers. 